A pregnant woman suddenly rushed out of the emergency room and told the doctor that there were many small dots on it. She thought she was going to die. Adam recalled the woman's experience of pretending to be dead on the hospital bed a few hours ago without closely observing. He let her go home unexpectedly only a few minutes later. He saw the woman again in the emergency room. This time the reason was that her teeth were a bit itchy. Adam still didn't pay close attention. He was in a hurry to get off work and go to the bar to attend his friend's pre-wedding party. However, as soon as he arrived at the bar, the director called again. He asked Adam to return to the hospital for duty immediately because another doctor couldn't come back from Sydney in time. Very reluctantly, Adam had to risk breaking up with his friends and hurried back to the hospital. To his surprise, the first critically ill patient he received when he came back was the woman in the emergency room at this time. She not only had a very high blood pressure, premature placental abruption, severe preeclampsia, and the fetus was only 25 weeks old. Due to his misjudgment and failure to admit her in time, the fetus was forced to be premature at this moment. Adam looked at the baby, who was not even as big as his palm. He was stunned for a long time. The feeling of guilt almost overwhelmed him and made him unable to forgive himself. What was even more terrifying was that the parturion had a massive hemorrhage. The gushing blood spread to the ground and even to the solace of Adam's shoes. He was completely panicked. I can't, I can't do this. This woman's gonna die and it's my fault. Fortunately, the head nurse noticed something was wrong in time and called the chief doctor back. Under his all-out rescue, the parturion finally survived. But the premature baby was not so lucky. He was sent to the pediatric intensive care unit, and his life and death were unknown. This became Adam's heartache. No matter when or where, the scene of the operation haunted him like a nightmare, making him collapse and blame himself. Only when he was helping to knit cotton socks for the baby could his heart have a short period of stability. Not only that, after getting off work every day, Adam would come to the pediatric ward, quietly stand by the baby's hospital bed, keep explaining, keep apologizing, and keep praying. If possible, he hoped to give all the good luck in his life to this child to protect him through the difficulties and survive. This misdiagnosis incident also had a more serious impact on Adam's career. He almost fell into an obsessive state. Every mole and every pain on the patient made him very nervous. Adam was very afraid that another disaster would occur because of his negligence. He even rushed directly into the operating room where the director was performing an operation and asked him to allow him to operate on a patient with abdominal pain or at least have a CT examination. Home. Now. Oh, what? Yeah, home. That's a good boy. In such a mental state, Adam could hardly complete his work well. Making mistakes seemed to be an inevitable outcome. 